that you're already working a ridiculous amount of hours. For most people, they think the solution is to just hire someone. But what if I told you, you just need to raise your prices? I know this sounds weird for you to raise your prices when obviously people love your current price, but there are a few reasons why you need to do this. First, they obviously do not feel your prices are too high as they're willing to wait it out. Second, you can't possibly work any more hours and you need to slow down this wait list. And third, hiring someone might give you more sales, but not necessarily more profits. Now I can hear some of you already. Tammy, if I raise my prices, people will stop using me. I'd rather hire someone. That is fear talking. Think about it. You're already losing people who don't want to wait in that line. If someone has to wait weeks to use you and they have a need right now, they're already walking away and probably paying someone way more money than what they would have paid you just so they can get it done and solve that pain point they have. Which means right now you're losing people and giving your competition the profits that you should be enjoying. If you have a line of people trying to use your services or waiting to purchase your product, you already have good brand recognition. You have folks that want what you have to offer, and most of them would even pay more if they could get it sooner. So now is a great opportunity for you to raise those prices and slow down the business just a little bit. What do you have to lose? You're already losing people. This will help weed out those only using you for your cheap prices and open up the door for those willing to pay more or to be seen sooner. But I get it. It feels much better if you were to have someone helping you out. No worries. Let's take a look at both your options using two different examples, one for service-based businesses and one for product-based businesses. In our first example, we're going to say that you provide a service that you charge around $250 to the customer. And you might recall our number one calculation is sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profits. And on this $250 service, you make $50 in profits after you deduct your materials, your labor costs, and your expenses. But you also have a wait time of two to three weeks before you can help anybody because you can only do about 10 jobs a week. This means that your weekly profit is 10 jobs times $50 in profit or $500 in profit a week. You know something needs to change and you're torn between hiring someone or raising your prices or maybe both. So let's see what the numbers look like Option A, you raise your price by $50. Let's say you raise your price from $250 to $300. Since none of your costs go up and your expenses stay the same, theoretically your profits are going to go from $50 to $100. So what's the overall impact? Well, some people aren't going to want to pay those higher prices, but there are going to be others that will. So yes, some people will drop up, but remember, you have these long wait times. So what's going to happen is your wait times are going to come down because some of those people are going to move up who are willing to pay that price. So now you can actually help people quicker and your wait time goes from three to four weeks down to about a week or maybe two. Now you didn't hire anybody, so you can't do any more jobs than what you're already doing because we're not going to be working any more hours. You've got $100 in profits, which means you still have the same 10 jobs, but now you have $100 in profit, which means that your profit just went from $500 to $1,000. No more hours worked, but double the profit. Lead times got cut down and you still have steady business. I call this a win. Now let's look at option B, where you keep your prices the same and you hire somebody. Now, this is a trap that many small business owners get themselves into. They are able to do more jobs and they increase their sales, but they don't realize the impact of just hiring somebody when they're too busy. Let me explain. You still charge the same $250 with the $50 profit. Your lead times are still two to three weeks, but by hiring somebody, you can go from 10 jobs a week to 15 jobs a week, and that'll cut that lead time down. And because you're a business person who's been working on your business numbers, you ensure that your labor costs are always included in your cost of goods. So you've been including your labor. However, now you need to include this new person as well. You've been using $20 as your fair wage. In the past, the job took four hours. So you would have four hours times $20 meant that you had $80 in labor. Now you hope to knock those jobs back to two and a half hours but now you have two people. So now we're looking at about five labor hours times the same $20 means your labor hours go up to $100. This means your labor costs go from $80 a job to $100 a job. So your cost of goods are gonna have to go up 20 bucks. And if your cost of goods go up $20, that means your profit is gonna come down $20. 
This means your profit of $50 before is now only $30 because you took away that $20 from your extra cost of goods. However, the good news is you can do 15 jobs a week. So let's see what your weekly profit now looks like. You have 15 jobs times $30, which means your profit is $450. You read that right. You hired someone, knocked out 50% more jobs, but yet you made $50 less in profit. Wow. Your sales went up $1,250, those five extra jobs times the $250, but your profit went down 20%. And this is why so many small business owners are surprised that they make less money even though they're doing more sales. They forget that their costs go up once they hire somebody. Now let's look at option C, which is where we do both of these things. You raise your prices and you hire someone. So first, let's start with sales. We already know that we will do 15 jobs a week because we hired somebody. So at the new price of $300, our sales go from $2,500 up to $4,500. Now that's nice. So how about the profits? So we're going to use some of the numbers we already figured out. We know that our labor hours will cost us $20 in profit due to our costs going up. Remember earlier, we figured out that our costs go up 20 bucks. So before the price change, you might recall that your profit went from $50 to $30 when we hired somebody. But now we've also raised our prices $50. So that's $30 plus the $50 of our new profit. So now our profit is $80 per job. And this is when we've raised our price and we've hired somebody. So the weekly profit now becomes $80 times the 15 jobs we're able to do or $1,200. Now that is nice as well because before you were doing 10 jobs by yourself making $500 in profit and now because you've raised your prices and you've hired some help, you've cut those lead times back and now you're making $1,200. Not bad. Let's take a quick look at how all three options played out. Option A of just raising your prices, you went from $500 in profit to $1,000 in profit. Option B, hiring somebody, went from $500 to $450 in profit. Option C, raising your prices and hiring somebody, you went from $500 to $1,200 in profit. I don't know about you, but I like two of these. I'm not a big fan of one of them. If you want to remain a solo person, just raise your prices. If you want to grow and continue to grow, raise your prices and hire somebody. Both of them are going to be winners. The biggest takeaway I want you to get from this is run the numbers. What is the actual impact on your business? Now, for some of you, hiring somebody might also increase some of your other costs as well. So please make sure you include that in, especially if it means you need to purchase more equipment or you plan to get another vehicle or something else that's going to raise those expenses. But the biggest takeaway is doing what you're doing isn't going to help. But either way, you definitely need to raise your prices to slow down that wait time and lead to more profit. Just hiring somebody isn't going to solve your problem. Let's take a look at another example. This time we'll assume that you have a product that you make and it is flying off the shelves. However, because you work alone, you can only make so many a week. The minute you make them, they sell out. Then you put everybody on hold again until the next week. And since you can only make 50 a week, this means you can only sell 50 a week. So in order to control your wait times, you started to limit how many people can buy and you have a long list of people that are waiting. Obviously, you have a great product at a great price. Guess what? It's time to raise your prices. However, just like before, we're going to take a look at all three options. Option A, just raising your prices. Let's say you sell your product for $25 and you have a $10 profit on each one after materials, labor hours, and making it and all of your expenses. We already know that you sell 50 a week. So your profit is 50 times the $10 or $500 a week. But what if you raised your price just $5? to 30 bucks. Since nothing else is changing, your profit would go from $10 to $15. And since people love your product, otherwise they wouldn't have been waiting this long, you're probably going to still sell out every single week. So now your profit is 50 times $15 or 750 in profits a week. That's a good win. Now, what if you went with option B and hired someone to help, but you left your prices the same? You know that if you had some help just 10 hours a week, you could double the amount that you could produce and now you could sell 100 of these things a week. You're thinking of hiring someone at $15 an hour for 10 hours a week, which means you're going to have payroll of $150. So since your labor is going to go up that $150, we know your profits are going to drop by $150 each week. So if your current profit is $500 for those 50, 
but now you plan to sell 50 more, that means your profit's going to be $1,000. But because we have to pay that new employee the 150, our profits are $1,000 minus the 150, which means your profit for 100 of these things is 850. This still isn't bad. You're still making more money. Now let's see what happens with option C, hiring somebody and raising your prices. Using our previous numbers, we know that when we raise our prices, a batch of 50 can create a profit of 750. So if we hire somebody and double our sales, that means our profit will be 1500. However, we need to pay for that extra labor, and that means the profit looks like 1500 minus the 150 for that employee, which makes our profit with raising our prices and hiring somebody 1350. I like this number. How about you? All right, let's take a look at all three again. Option A, just raising our prices, our profit went from $500 to $750. Option B, hiring somebody, we were able to double our sales and our profit went from $500 to $850. Option C, raising our prices and hiring somebody, we doubled our sales and our profit went from $500 to $1350. Which one would you choose? Just like our service-based business, by sitting down and working out our numbers, raising our prices is a no-brainer when we have long wait times. We have people waiting for us to buy what we are selling. Hiring somebody is optional and can lead to even more profits if done right. So if you don't mind being a boss, then do both. And if you just want to stay solo, raising your prices will slow down that wait list and lead to more profits. Either way, you win. Unfortunately, for way too many small business owners, they think they just need to work more hours and try to get all these people that have been waiting. This is not a good use of your time, nor is it going to solve your problem. Remember, time is money. I know it's uncomfortable to raise your prices, but one of the best times that you can raise your prices is when you're so busy because you already have a demand for what it is that you do. Whether it's a product or service, when people are willing to wait, it's because they believe in what it is that you do. This is simple supply and demand. By the way, if they were only waiting on you because you had the best price in town, they were never going to be loyal to you anyways because somebody's always going to come along and offer it cheaper. Remember, you're in it for the long haul and you're playing the long game and you don't need to be leaving money on the table out of fear when you have nothing to fear because people are willing to wait for you. So please sit down today and look at those numbers from all different angles and then make the best decision and I'll bet you raising your prices is going to be a winner. And if you want to learn more about mistakes small business owners make when pricing their products and services, check out this video.